We start tonight with that dazzling show in the sky visible across North America. Tens of millions of people have witnessed a rare total solar eclipse. Its path cut across the continent from Mexico through the U.S. across Canada. Now, those lucky enough to be in the path of totality saw the moon completely engulf the sun and briefly turn day into night. The last sliver of light before the sun is swallowed up by the moon. Then, a single bright bead of light, like the jewel on a diamond ring, before totality. <laughs> Skygazers across North America were treated to a once in a lifetime view. That is so beautiful. Oh my, oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, now we got them. Oh, okay, listen for the birds. Oh my God. I don't hear any. During totality, the sun's atmosphere, the corona, is visible. And you can see flares on the sun's surface, some of them the size of our own planet. A solar eclipse is the consequence of a cosmic coincidence. The sun and the moon appear the same size in our sky, even though the sun is some 400 times larger. And every now and then, the moon passes directly between Earth and the sun, blocking out its light and creating a path where an eclipse is visible. For those in the center of the path, the eclipse is total. With every kilometer you move off that path, the coverage gets less. A total eclipse usually happens once or twice every year somewhere on Earth, but it's not often that the path of totality passes through a densely populated corridor like this one, from Mexico through the United States and into Canada. And just as sudden as it disappeared, the sun returns. The sky is again filled with light as the moon's shadow dissipates, but those who stood in its path will remember it forever. Including Keith Cowing, who is editor at NASA Watch. He joins me now from Washington. He's been making the media rounds today on this day of the total solar eclipse. So, Keith, tell me, um, what did you experience today? You're in Washington, D.C. You were not in the path of totality, right? No, but we got... About 90%, we had our glasses and we went outside. And it was, uh, you know, we, we got, we didn't get the full show, but we got a good, you know, third row seat to what was going on. Well, for people who have never experienced uh, a solar eclipse or even partial, tell us what was it like? What did you experience in the moments of the actual eclipse? Well, when there's an, if you're actually in what's called the path of totality where it is, yeah, there's your picture, um, when the moon completely covers the sun, as you approach that, it starts to get weirdly dark, like the, the shadows are at an angle you're not used to during the day, and then it gets quiet, and that's mostly because, A, everybody around you is just like freaking out, this is really cool, but also it's not a lot of the animals that are thinking, well, it's nighttime, it's time to go to sleep, the birds stop chirping. And then it starts to get cool because the sun warms our planet. And so at one point when the sun is completely out, it's nighttime almost uh, and the middle of the day. And just as you're getting used to that, it reverses itself and suddenly there's the sun again. Mm -hmm. So it's just a very unusual way to just, you know, take a break from the day. And of course, you're usually surrounded by thousands of other people who are having exactly the same impression. I just wish more people would put their phones down and just look at the sky through their special glasses and, yeah. and leave it to NASA to take the good pictures that you can send to people. I was going to ask you if you noticed that because we were showing live pictures as the eclipse was moving across North America. And, and what you know st stuck out to me and people in the newsroom was that um, the people on the ground were looking up and if they weren't, all you saw were their, their phones recording it. Um, I guess they're trying to preserve this moment, which is a good yeah. thing, isn't it? I mean, what, what's your take on that? 
I mean, here we are. This is 20, we're, you know, a quarter of the way through the 21st century. Everybody's got, you know, the phones and everything. I mean, it's just, it, it's a part of life. And that's how you document things. And it, I don't know, it's not, you probably delete the, the photos in two years anyways. But yeah. I, the point is, they thought it was important enough to record, to be there, to stop what they were doing. And, you know, if I can go Carl Sagan on you for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, here you are, we're on a planet. And then the moon... Another world is moving in front of our local sun. And while many people say, oh, you feel very small when this happens, but if you can sort of sit back and imagine yourself as the planet, you can feel rather large and you just get an under a real appreciation of what's going on here. And, you know, you're covering the news like I do and watching it like I do. And every now and then having something that totally distracts people or at least a couple hundred million people to look up at the wonders in the sky and not at their newspapers is yeah. a good thing. Yeah, I mean, was today a moment that you think people would have had a, a surprise sense of zen when, especially if they were there, you know, seeing a, a total eclipse? It, you know, the thing is, it, it, what really, I think, triggers the response is when it starts to get dark. Mm. Even if you don't see it, it's not completely dark, but where we were, again, I was just looking out the window and I, the shadows were unusual. It was sort of mm. like a weird thunderstorm coming from the wrong direction. And that sort of gets you going. And if you go out and you put the glasses on, you look at the sun and there's a big dent in it. That's weird. Yeah. And, you know, all your neighbors, it's, it's, it's a group thing. And I think part of it is driven by just how everybody else is reacting with each other. And, you know, you, people are just sort of like, well, Let's just look at this. This is cool. There's your Zen. Everybody's just sort of digging it. And, and as you were saying, you know, the, the temperature drops dramatically um, when when you have that moment of totality. Perhaps a lot of people have a renewed appreciation for the sun and what it gives us every day. Was was this yeah. solar was this solar eclipse a moment too to inspire maybe some future astronomers, astronauts, some future Keith Cowings out there? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it did me back in 1970. I was a little kid and I, I had a little box and a projector from my telescope. And that certainly I'd never seen one before. And that just got my attention. And uh, yeah, I, I think this is something that you really don't have to do much for other than get these glasses. And they here in the States, they were giving them out everywhere. You could buy them overnight. Every, everybody had them. There were two guys out doing uh, yard work and I offered them some glasses and they held theirs up. So and there they were with their the clippers and the blowers. So I mean, we everybody knew this was coming, and you didn't have to spend money or do anything special other than pay attention. Mm. And that I think is important because so many things that happen in a technological society these days, you see these pictures from telescopes and stuff, and you're like, well, that's pretty. But this is something that everybody could appreciate and understand. And one of the things you can also do is take a spaghetti strainer. And if you hold it just right, these little holes all act like pinhole cameras. Mm -hmm. And you can see all these little suns. So you go to your kitchen. If you got a kitchen, you've got something that you can view an eclipse with. Who'd have thought? And I've got 30 seconds. I'm going to ask you, did NASA learn anything new today about the sun or the moon? Oh, yeah. They had actually had several jet planes flying in the path as the sun was moving at, you know, like 2,400 kilometers a, a, an hour. You know, these planes were following it, mm -hmm. and pointing some very precise instruments there. And when the moon goes in front of the sun like this, you get a very, very precise image and things come out that you normally would never see. Yeah. And you could recreate it a little bit with a telescope, but nothing beats having a lunar uh, movement right in front of the sun perfectly blocking the sun out so you can see the corona and the other yeah. things that are normally never seen by your eyes or by telescopes. Which is what we saw today, that's for sure. Keith Cowan, Keith, we appreciate you walking us through yeah. this day of the solar eclipse in North America. Thank you. Including DW Simon Bone, he joined us by phone from Paducah, Kentucky, where he was following the solar eclipse. This was a very special eclipse. It was a rather wide path of totality. The moon was relatively large compared to the sun this time. And so uh, more people were able to see it just by staying where they were. But it also uh, attracted a lot of visitors this time who, who missed the last one seven years ago. But what you see is the moon gradually taking over the sun. 
the sun turning into a small crescent until it disappears. And then you see, then you can take off your, your special glasses for a few minutes mm-hmm. and you can see the solar flares all around it in a, in a bright circle. It's, it's astonishing. So, so what were people doing? I mean, how were they reacting to this, you know, this amazing spectacle in the sky? Well, it, people, it's, it's always good to see how people respond. They, they do so in so many different ways, but many people applaud. I, I, I always find that very touching. Um, but most people were just there to, 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 to stare in awe at, at, at what they were seeing. And um, I did have a word with a couple of people, and um, uh, they, they'd never seen anything like that. They did know what to expect, but the, there's a visceral feeling that you get mm. when, the, when the sun disappears. We're just not hardwired for that. Um, mm. And what you also notice is the, the insects and the birds go crazy just as the, as the sky gets dark. So they know something, something strange is happening. I mean, it, it's interesting. You say people all of a sudden started to applauding. Is it similar to when you're in an airplane and you land and um, sometimes you see people start applauding then when the wheels finally touch the ground? I think sometimes that's because they're a little bit scared of what happened and, mm-hmm. and maybe, there's, maybe there's a connection there. I think it's, it's just uh, maybe it's the only thing people can think of doing that they see something so great. What do you do? Well, you, you clap. It's, 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 yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, the sun doesn't hear it, the moon doesn't hear it, but you're expressing yourself and, and uh, bravo. We've, we've reported a lot about this solar eclipse tourism. Simon, did you travel um, over to the United States just to see this eclipse? Well, let's say I, I adjusted my, my uh, journey time so that I could see it, yes. Okay, so the, the answer is yes. And would you do it again? Is it worth it? Oh, it is absolutely worth it. And indeed, I've already got the next two eclipses in my calendar, 20, uh, 2044 and 2045. Um, uh, the, the first of which will be in Alberta, yeah. and then the second one will be another another line stretching across the United States. So uh-huh. I, I'm, I, I hope I'll be there for those, but uh, I'm already planning to go. I hope you and I will both be here in 22 years, in 2044. <laughs> we, we will see Simon Bone on the phone from Paducah, Kentucky, on Solar Eclipse Watch for Simon, thank you. And here in the studio with me now is Derek Williams from DW Science Department. It's good to see you, Derek. We're indoors. No eclipse here. A big one in North America. Why is it such a big deal? Well, in order to answer that, you kind of have to do a little bit of elementary background stuff. Now, first of all, um, although the sun and the moon look like they're the same size, they, of course, aren't. The sun's diameter is about... 400 times the diameter of the moon. So it's much, much, much larger. But it's just that the moon is 400 times closer to the Earth than the sun is. So that makes them appear to be sort of the same size. Um, Now, as the moon orbits the Earth, which is orbiting around the sun at the same time, there are moments when the moon passes directly between the sun and a portion of the Earth's surface. And when it does that, it blocks the sun's radiation for a while. Um, And and in what's called a partial solar eclipse, the moon only appears to take kind of like this bite out of the sun. And And that's what people are seeing right now, like along in the southern United States, along the eastern seaboard, who are not in this path of totality, right? Right. Well, the totality begins with a partial eclipse as it as the as the as the moon moves in front of the sun. It, it starts, it eventually reaches a point where it blocks it completely. And that's what we're seeing right now, Derek. This is Indianapolis, Indiana right now, live picture. So this is the total solar eclipse taking place right now. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's isn't amazing, it? yeah. It's, it's it an is. amazing sight. And we see what the, the corona is what we see around yeah, it, right? The, the superheated gases that surround the sun. So you can only see those when the sun itself has been blocked out. Um, as it's being blocked out now, as the light from the sun is being blocked out by, by the moon. Now, there are different kinds of, there, there are two different kinds of, of solar, other solar eclipses. There's what's called also an annular solar eclipse, which is when the moon is perfectly aligned with the sun like it is now, mm-hmm. but it's a little farther away from Earth in its orbit. Now, you might know that the, the orbit of the moon is not a perfect circle. So it's not always the same distance away from the Earth. It's an ellipse. Mm -hmm. So it goes through an elliptical orbit. 
Now, when the, when the moon is a little bit farther away from the Earth and it's in its elliptical orbit, mm -hmm. then it's, it appears smaller, so it doesn't cover the sun completely. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, and you get this, this sort of ring of fire around the outside of, 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 the, of the shadow of the moon. Um, I think that we're seeing the grounds now. It looks like complete and utter it's darkness. darkness right now. Let me just ask my producer about and I guess this is this also Indianapolis that we're seeing right now. This is this is moving into uh, this is the partial eclipse yeah, so the, aspect that we talked about as it as the moon slowly crosses the sun. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's not it's not moving all that slowly. It's uh, you know this the shadow that it casts on the Earth, the totality is moving along this this strip at about just under two and a half thousand kilometers an hour. So it's mm -hmm. actually- It's fast. Um, it's, it's pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And, and um, the, the, the amount of time that somebody who's on the ground will spend in the shadow of this totality, so in this total darkness, mm -hmm. is only about three and a half to four minutes. Which is what, which is what we are seeing right here now. This is what we're seeing yeah. right now. Um, it's, it's, it, it, it's, when the moon is closer to the Earth in its orbit, as it is now, then you get you get this total solar eclipse, which is when it it, it casts this stretch of territory down on the surface into into the shadow for a little while, mm -hmm. and it feels like people say I've never been in a total solar eclipse myself. Yeah, but people say that it feels like really like day suddenly turns to night. It gets it gets colder. It gets colder. Sure. Um, the birds stop singing. That's right. Yeah. Um, the region, it's, it's this dramatic phenomenon, which, which we call the totality. Yeah. I mean, right now, there, see, it's, the totality is now beginning to end there over Indianapolis, right? Yeah. Uh, what we are seeing, though, in this corona, it, it looked like there were red pieces shooting out from the sun. Do we know what that is? That's, well, that's the that's uh, deformations on the surface of the moon uh -huh. that, that appear as 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 the as the light from the sun. The moon is not it looks like a circle yeah. from down on earth when you see it against the backdrop of space, but when when you get the sun behind it, you begin to see the irregularities in the moon's surface and that's the that's the sun being deflected or moving through those irregularities that show you the moon is not actually a perfect sphere that's perfectly round. Mm -hmm. There are geographic figure, figures and features on the, the surface of the moon as well. Um, millions of people right now are flocking to areas hoping to experience this totality. Um, it's, it's really, it's a rare event, isn't it, to be in the place where the totality happens? Well, it's it's it's... It's interesting because total solar eclipses are not actually really all that rare. They happen irregularly, but one does occur somewhere on Earth mm -hmm. on average around every 18 months or so. Mm -hmm. um, that's irregularly. Sometimes it might not happen for three years, but on average every 18 months or so. And Derek, I've been told what we're seeing right now, these are live pictures from Cleveland, Ohio, where they are now about to hit totality, we see the moon covering more and more of the sun. This is one of the most interesting things, I think, about this particular, there's been a lot of hype mm -hmm. around this total eclipse. And, the, and, and, and there's, there's also some reason for it, which is that the path that this total eclipse is taking is taking us through some very heavily, populated, densely yeah. populated urban mm -hmm. centers, including mm -hmm. Cleveland and Indianapolis and Buffalo. So. So really, a lot of people are already in place to see it, um, even without all the eclipse tourism that That's we've right, seen. That's right, right. Plus, it comes after last week's surprise earthquake in the northeast of the U.S. So well, these forces of nature are commanding a lot of attention, aren't they? They, they seem to be in the U.S. at, at, at the moment, certainly. Um, this right here, Derek, we're looking at live pictures of Niagara Falls. Um, where people are waiting, I guess, for their moment of totality to occur. Niagara Falls, of course, being a place where people go to see the, the big the waterfalls. Yeah, well, um, this is it lies also on the on this this path during yeah. during this total solar eclipse. The moon's shadow moved or is moving as we speak along this arc that stretches diagonally across North America. So it, it made landfall on the west coast 
of Mexico and then has been passing across the large stretches of the United States, starting in Texas and ending eventually up in Maine and going through many other states along the way, and then moving into Canada, where, where it will leave North America off the coast of Newfoundland and, and Labrador. So mm -hmm. um, the whole process, as I said, will go faster than you think with that shadow traveling at nearly two and a half thousand kilometers an hour. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, during that time, because the sun's light is more or less totally blocked mm -hmm. from the stretch of territory in the moon's shadow, um, we're going to see a lot of these natural phenomena that you talked about earlier, that mm -hmm. birds stop singing, the temperature drops. I think that people in those, in, in the totality will experience what it feels like very briefly. Yeah. Well, that's, not, that's, that's Cleveland that we were just seeing there, people in Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. Well, I think that they'll begin to understand what a key role the sun plays in life yes. on this planet. And, and why you don't want the sun to ever go out, that no, is no. for sure. Derek, good to have you here at the big table. There we are.